Welcome to Hollywood Graveyard. There's a club out there whose membership boasts some of the biggest names in music, art, and entertainment. It's a highly exclusive club, one that people are dying to get into, but that no one ever aspires to be a part of. It's known as the 27 Club. It consists of notable figures in the entertainment world who all died tragically young, at the age of 27. The idea of a 27 Club originated with musicians in the 70s like Janis Joplin and Jimi Hendrix, but has since come to encompass celebrities from all walks of life, including actors, artists, sports figures, etc. And while there is no statistical evidence to support the notion that stars die at a greater rate at age 27 than any other age, the idea has seeped its way into the public consciousness, reflected in literature, art, and music. They're forever 27, Jimmy Janis, Brighton Jones. I'm hoping not to join the 27 Club. Join us today as we remember members of the 27 Club by visiting their final resting places. We begin our journey today teaming up with fellow YouTuber Necrotour to travel back to the 1800s and down to Sao Paulo, Brazil to find one of the very first members of the 27 Club. Alexander Levy certainly wasn't the first musician in the long history of musicians to die at age 27, but he is likely the first famous musician of some international notoriety to die at this age, and is therefore considered by many as the 27 Club's inaugural member. Alexander Levy was a Brazilian composer and pianist who showed remarkable talent from a very young age, contemporary critics comparing him to Mozart. He began performing at age 8 and publishing compositions in Europe as a teenager. He was known for combining classical music with Brazil's folk and popular music and rhythms. Some of his best known works are inscribed here on his tomb, like Sweet Brazilian. On January 17, 1892, Levy complained of feeling ill and died a short time later, his cause of death being reported as cerebral congestion and cardiac arrest. To this day, a prestigious music award is granted in Brazil in the name of Alexander Levy. To find the first known American member of the 27 Club, we head to St. Louis, Missouri. This is Calvary Cemetery, where rests legendary ragtime musician Louis Chauvin. He was known as the king of ragtime players. There are no recordings of him playing, but he's remembered by his peers as an exceptionally gifted performer and composer. He published works including Heliotrope Bouquet with Scott Joplin, which you're listening to right now. The tune can be heard in the 1983 film The Sting 2 and the 1977 biopic Scott Joplin, in which Chauvin was portrayed by Clifton Davis. Chauvin's cause of death in 1908 was listed as multiple sclerosis, probably syphilitic, and starvation due to a coma. We make our first trip to Hollywood today at Calvary Cemetery in East LA. In these grounds rests an actress known as one of Hollywood's first movie stars of Hispanic descent. Meet Myrtle Gonzalez. She began her career as a singer here in Los Angeles before moving into silent pictures in 1913. She appeared in some 80 films between 1913 and 1917 for studios such as Vitagraph and Universal, and was once described as the virgin white lily of the screen. She would appear a number of times alongside William Desmond Taylor, like in 1914's The Kiss. But Myrtle's life and career were cut short when she became a victim of the 1918 flu pandemic, which took the lives of some 50 million people worldwide. In the Mississippi Delta, there's a legend of a man who sold his soul to the devil at the local crossroads in order to achieve musical success. Whether or not this supernatural transaction ever actually took place, Robert Johnson would indeed become immortal for his music. This is Little Zion M.B. Church Cemetery in Greenwood, Mississippi. Near the base of an old pecan tree, we find the grave of Robert Johnson. He is considered the king of Mississippi Delta Blues. Robert Johnson took up the guitar as a teenager, taking lessons from Ike Zimmerman in the local cemetery where he could practice undisturbed. His prodigious skill seemed to come quite out of nowhere, giving rise to the legend that he sold his soul to the devil at the local crossroads at midnight in exchange for musical prowess. 
He traveled and performed extensively as an itinerant musician in the early 30s, and in 1936 and 37 made a number of important recordings, including Me and the Devil Blues, Me and the Devil, <laughs> we're walking side by side. And Crossroad Blues, now a blues standard. I went to the crossroad, fell down on my knee. But Johnson would never know the extent of his musical success and impact during his life. He died at the age of 27 on August 16, 1938, with no official cause of death reported. His music and legend only grew thereafter, as he would influence the next generation of musicians that became the fathers of rock and roll, like Chuck Berry. Johnson is sometimes described as the grandfather of rock and roll, and he's since been inducted into numerous halls of fame, including the Blues and Rock and Roll Halls of Fame. The myth of Robert Johnson has even been interpreted on screen a number of times. There is some ambiguity, though, about where exactly Robert is buried. A few miles south of here, in the graveyard of Mount Zion Church, is another Robert Johnson grave. This obelisk was placed in 1990 by Columbia Records and the Mount Zion Memorial Fund. That same year, a third marker to Johnson was placed at Payne Chapel in nearby Quito, with the inscription, Resting in the Blues. Both of these other sites are generally considered cenotaphs, though, and the site at Little Zion where we began is thought to be his most likely final resting place. Our next stop brings us back home to Los Angeles and Evergreen Cemetery. Here in Section G we find the grave of Jesse Belvin. As a songwriter, Belvin co-wrote one of the biggest hits of the 50s, Earth Angel, performed by the Penguins. Earth Angel, Earth Angel, will you be mine? The song's popularity resurged in the 80s when it was used in Back to the Future. He was also a talented singer and performer in his own right, with its like, Good Night My Love. His life and career were cut short, however, just after a 1960 performance in Little Rock, Arkansas. It was the very first concert in the history of that town played before an integrated audience. The concert was interrupted several times by white supremacists shouting racial epithets. Shortly after finishing the performance, Belvin and his wife were killed in a head-on collision as they drove through Hope, Arkansas. According to state troopers, the tires of their car had been tampered with. Jesse was 27, his wife 23. Let's cross the pond now and head back to England. This is Cheltenham Cemetery, where we find a name familiar to you fans of the Rolling Stones. Brian Jones was a rock musician, a guitar player, and founding member of the highly influential rock band The Rolling Stones, which formed in 1962. He would help craft the style that would become the sound of The Rolling Stones, and it was Brian who gave the band its name. As a talented multi-instrumentalist, he brought unique tones to the Stones, like the sitar in Paint It Black. I see a and I want it painted black. But in the years that followed, Jones became disillusioned with the direction of the band and saw his influence diminish. He left the group in 1969, and within a month was dead, found at the bottom of a swimming pool, drowned at the age of 27. He was reportedly buried 10 to 12 feet deep to prevent exhumation by trophy hunters. Future members Jimi Hendrix and Jim Morrison both paid tribute to Jones after his death. We continue our exploration of the history of the 27 Club at Sequoia National Park, where the ashes of Alan Blind Owl Wilson were scattered after his death in 1970 at the age of 27. Blind Owl was a rock and blues musician best known today for co-founding and fronting the band Canned Heat. The group formed in 1965 with Wilson as singer, guitar and harmonica player and principal songwriter. Among their biggest hits are On the Road Again and Going Up the Country. The band would perform at legendary festivals like Monterey Pop Festival and Woodstock. In September 1970, Wilson was scheduled to leave for Germany for a European tour, but he missed his flight, and on September 3rd was found dead in his sleeping bag on a hill in Topanga Canyon. His death was ruled an accidental barbiturate overdose. Blind Owl Wilson was also a passionate conservationist, and fought to preserve the environment, 
so his ashes were scattered here amongst the giant redwoods he loved so much. Turning the compass north, we make our way to the Seattle area. This grand monument found at Greenwood Memorial Park is to one of rock's most legendary guitarists, Jimi Hendrix. He's considered popular music's most influential electric guitar figure. Some of his early hits came out of his time in the UK with the band The Jimi Hendrix Experience, including Purple Haze. Back in the U.S. he made a splash with audiences at the Monterey Pop Festival, playing the guitar with his teeth and setting his guitar on fire. His third album, Electric Ladyland, reached number one on the U.S. charts. He pioneered many sounds and effects on guitar still used today, like overdriven amps, guitar feedback, and tone-altering effects. By 1969, Hendrix was the world's highest paid rock musician. That year he headlined the Woodstock Music Festival, where he famously performed the Star Spangled Banner on the electric guitar. But only one year after that legendary performance, Hendrix would be dead. On the morning of September 18, 1970, while in London, his girlfriend found him unresponsive. He was transported to the hospital, where he was pronounced dead, of apparent asphyxia while intoxicated. For the next three decades, he had a simple grave here in Renton until 2002 when construction began on this grand gazebo monument, which features murals, lyrics from his songs, and of course, an electric guitar. Just weeks after Jimi Hendrix died, another of the biggest names in popular music was found dead, Janis Joplin. She has no grave, so we'll remember her on the shores of the Pacific Ocean where her ashes were scattered. Janis Joplin was one of the most widely known and successful rock stars of the 60s, known for her mezzo-soprano voice and electric stage presence. She rose to fame following a performance at the Monterey Pop Festival with the psychedelic rock band Big Brother and the Holding Company. She'd then go on to find success as a solo artist, including appearing at Woodstock. She had a number of tracks hit the charts, including covers of Me and Bobby McGee and Peace of My Heart. Janice died of a heroin overdose on October 4th, 1970, in room 105 of the Landmark Motor Hotel, now the Highland Gardens Hotel, here in Hollywood. Janice was cremated at Westwood Village Memorial Park, her ashes scattered from a plane here off of Stinson Beach. The following summer, more tragic news would rock the music world, this time coming from Paris. We're at Père Lachaise Cemetery, where we find the grave of Jim Morrison, legendary singer and frontman of the rock band The Doors. The band formed in Venice, California in 1965, and would soon embody the rebellious counterculture of youth in that era. They shot to fame with their song, Light My Fire. Come on, baby, light my fire. Other hits include Break On Through to the Other Side, Riders on the Storm, and my favorite Doors song, People Are Strange. People are strange when you're a stranger, faces look ugly when you're alone. With his wild and unpredictable personality, unique voice, and poetic lyrics, Morrison would become one of the most influential frontmen in the history of rock. In 1971, Morrison was living in Paris with his girlfriend Pamela. On the morning of July 3rd, he was found dead in the bathtub. His cause of death has been shrouded in mystery since no autopsy was performed, the official cause of death being listed as heart failure. The area surrounding Jim's grave here is fenced off due to pervasive vandalism and trash piles that would accumulate around his grave from fans. There was even once a bust of Morrison on his tombstone, but that was stolen. The current marker features a Greek inscription which translates as true to his own spirit. It was the culmination of all these big music names dying at the age of 27 between 1969 and 1971 that gave birth to the idea of the 27 Club. But whether a curse or a coincidence, it wouldn't stop there. Moving into 1973, we're up in Palo Alto, California now, at Alta Mesa Memorial Park. Here's one for you deadheads, Ronald Pigpen McKernan. He was a singer and instrumentalist, a founding member of the legendary San Francisco counterculture band The Grateful Dead. The psychedelic band fused elements of rock, blues, folk, and country with performances that are often improvisational, a jam band. Pigpen sang in the band and played harmonica and keyboards. By his mid-twenties, Pigpen's alcohol abuse began to affect his health, 
1973 he was found dead from a gastrointestinal hemorrhage, joining the others in the ill-fated 27 Club. In 1994 he was posthumously inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Three years after the death of Jim Morrison, his partner Pamela would join him in the 27 Club. While never officially married, Pamela Corson is often called Jim's wife. They dated for about five years. It was Pamela who discovered Jim dead in their Paris apartment bathroom. In an eerie parallel, three years later, Pamela died from a heroin overdose in her Hollywood apartment, also at the age of 27. The original intention was to bury Pamela with Jim in Paris, but due to complications of transporting a body for burial to another country, she was inurned here at Fairhaven Memorial Park in Orange County, California. Let's leapfrog back over to the UK once again, this time to southern Wales. Morriston Cemetery is just outside of Swansea. This is where Pete Ham is laid to rest. Pete was a popular rock musician in the 70s, known as the frontman and songwriter for the band Badfinger. The band evolved from the very first band signed by the Beatles' Apple Band, called the Ivies. They had a string of hits in the early 70s, including No Matter What, Day After Day, and Baby Blue, which you fans of Breaking Bad will recognize from the very last episode of the series. Special love. Pete Ham also co-wrote Without You, made popular by Harry Nilsson in 1971. But in 1974 it came to light that the band had been defrauded by their manager, and were left practically penniless. Unable to cope, Pete Ham hanged himself in his garage, his suicide note directly implicating his manager. From Wales we head back to their neighbours to the east in England. This is Southwest Middlesex Crematorium in the Greater London area. Here on the grounds, in Section F, the ashes of Gary Thane were scattered. Gary was a New Zealand rock musician in the 70s. He played bass with a number of bands in the New Zealand and Australia area, before being asked to join the English band Uriah Heep in 1972. He played with the band for the next three years, including on their album Demons and Wizards. Tragically, like so many on this club roster, Gary's induction into the 27 Club came by way of a drug overdose in 1975. Back to the States, we head now to Memphis, Tennessee, and Memphis Funeral Home and Memorial Gardens. This is the grave of Chris Bell. He was a guitarist, singer, and songwriter, remembered for co-founding and leading the power pop band Big Star, which formed in 1971. Bell left the band in 1972 and went on to pursue a solo career. His notable tracks include I Am The Cosmos, Speed Of Sound, and You And Your Sister. All I want to do is to spend some time with you. He would be a pioneer of early alternative rock and influenced a generation of artists to follow. Chris died on December 27, 1978 when he lost control of his sports car on the way home from band rehearsal. His car struck a wooden light pole, which fell and killed him instantly. We've reached the 1980s, and find ourselves back in the Los Angeles area at Green Hills Memorial Park. Here we find the grave of Dennis Dale Boone, known as D. Boone. In 1980, D. Boone formed the punk rock band Minutemen, a pioneering group of alternative rock. Boone was a singer, songwriter, and guitarist for the band. During their five-year career, the Minutemen recorded four albums and eight EPs. Among their popular tracks was This Ain't No Picnic. And if you're a fan of Jackass, you'll recognize their track Corona as the main theme of the show and movies. The band continued until December 22, 1985, when Boone was killed in a van accident in the Arizona desert. Another tragic entry in the 27 Club. After the death of Dee Boone, the Minutemen disbanded. One of the most spectacular cemeteries in the New York area is Greenwood in Brooklyn, a must-see if you're in the area. There are numerous legends in these historic grounds, and among them, a talented artist named Jean-Michel Basquiat. He was a neo-expressionist artist of Haitian and Puerto Rican descent. He gained notoriety as a street artist, 
painting graffiti in the Lower East Side in the 70s. By the 80s he began exhibiting his drawings and paintings, and even caught the eye of Andy Warhol, with whom he would collaborate. Jean-Michel died of a heroin overdose at the age of 27. In 2017, a painting of a skull by Basquiat sold for $110.5 million, setting a new record price at the time for an American artist. Once again we cross the Atlantic and land in the beautiful English countryside, this time in Oxfordshire and White Hill Burial Ground. Among those enjoying this picturesque view in eternity is a musician named Pete DeFritis. He was a rock drummer remembered for playing with Echo and the Bunnymen, which rose to prominence in the early 80s. Among their biggest hits are The Killing Moon and Lips Like Sugar. They also did a cover of The Doors' People Are Strange for the Lost Boys soundtrack. On June 14, 1989, Pete was riding his motorcycle to Liverpool from London when he collided with a car. He died from his injuries. From rock and roll to country music, it's the 90s now, and we find ourselves in Boone, North Carolina, and Mount Lawn Memorial Park. This is the grave of Chris Austin. He was a guitarist, singer, and songwriter who was a member of Reba McIntyre's band. He also played for Ricky Skaggs' band. Chris would also release music on his own, charting three singles on the country charts, including Blues Stay Away From Me. On March 16, 1991, Chris was aboard a plane with several other members of Reba McIntyre's band and her road manager. Shortly after taking off from the airport in San Diego, the plane crashed into a mountain, killing all on board. Reba was devastated, dedicating her next album, For My Broken Heart, to her deceased bandmates. It's 1993, and punk rock and grunge are all the rage, particularly in the burgeoning Seattle music scene. Among these groups was a band called The Gits, whose lead singer was the charismatic Mia Zapata. The Gits would release two albums in 1992 and 1994, but for Mia their second album would be posthumous. In the early morning hours of July 7, 1993, Mia left a Seattle tavern and began to walk home. Around 3.30 a.m. her body was discovered. She had been murdered. Her murder went unsolved for a decade until advances in DNA evidence led to the arrest and conviction of her killer. In 2005 a documentary was made about the Gits. Mia Zapata rests here at Cave Hill Cemetery in Louisville, Kentucky. The following year, 1994, would rock the grunge world to its core and cement the notion of a 27 Club particularly among musicians. Welcome to Aberdeen, Washington. Just a few blocks from the home where he grew up is a park dedicated to the memory of Kurt Cobain. It's also called the Kurt Cobain Under the Bridge Memorial. He spent some of his youth beneath this bridge and drew inspiration for his music from these surroundings. In 1987, Kurt formed the band Nirvana with bassist Krist Novoselic. He played guitar, sang, and was the principal songwriter. They went through a number of drummers before recruiting Dave Grohl. Nirvana was a pivotal part of the Seattle music scene that would be known as grunge. In 1991 they released their seminal album Nevermind to worldwide success and acclaim. They had a smash hit in the song Smells Like Teen Spirit. This would signal the end of the big hair band and the dawn of mainstream alternative rock. Other hits like Come As You Are, Heart Shaped Box, and All Apologies still get regular airtime on the radio 30 years later. But Kurt would be somewhat haunted by his success and struggled with drug addiction and depression. On April 8, 1994, Kurt Cobain's body was discovered in his home, dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. His body had been there for days, authorities believing he died around April 5th. Kurt helped immortalize the Wishka River. In turn, the river now immortalizes him. After his death, family and friends gathered here to scatter a portion of his ashes into the Wishka River. His spirit flows with the tide twice daily. And two years later, Nirvana released its live album, 
from the muddy banks of the Wishka. Other portions of Kurt's ashes were given to family, including his wife Courtney Love and his daughter Frances, who scattered more of his ashes in McLean Creek in Olympia. In 2014, Kurt Cobain was posthumously inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with Nirvana. Two months later, in June of 94, another rock band would lose a member to this ill-fated club. Kristen Pfaff was the bass player, songwriter, and background vocalist for the band Pole, which, incidentally, was fronted by Kurt Cobain's wife, Courtney Love. She played with the band from 1993 to 1994, performing on the album Live Through This. Two months after the album's release, though, Kristen was found dead from acute opiate intoxication. Kristen Pfaff would be posthumously inducted into the Buffalo Music Hall of Fame, and was laid to rest here at Forest Lawn in Buffalo, New York. We're in Texas now, and Paradise South Cemetery in the Houston area. This is the grave of Patrick Hawkins, known as Fat Pat. He was a rapper in the 90s, a rising talent in the southern rap scene, and original member of Screwed Up Click. He released two albums in 1998, both of which would be released posthumously. On February 3, 1998, Pat went to a promoter's apartment to collect an appearance fee. He was shot and killed outside the apartment by an unknown assailant. His murder remains unsolved. As we approach the new millennium, we find ourselves back at Green Hills in Rancho Palos Verdes. Here we find one for you wrestling fans, Louis Spicoli. He was a professional wrestler in the WWF as Rad Radford, and later in the ECW and WCW as Louis Spicoli. Known for his use of the Death Valley Driver, he was an AWF heavyweight champion, as well as two-time WWA World Trios champion with Bill Anderson and Tim Patterson. Louis struggled off and on with drug abuse throughout his life. On February 15, 1998, he overdosed and asphyxiated in his sleep. He was posthumously inducted into the Southern California Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. We've made it to the 2000s. If you grew up in the 90s, there's a good chance you were a fan of, or were at least familiar with, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. We're at Rose Hills Memorial Park in Whittier, California. Here in the scattering garden, we remember Thuy Trang. She was born in Vietnam, and after the fall of Saigon, young Thuy and her family escaped on a cargo ship. They eventually made it to the U.S. as refugees and were granted asylum. They settled in California where Thuy would study martial arts. Her skills would land her the role for which she is best known, that of Trini Kwan, the Yellow Ranger, in the original cast of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, in 81 episodes between 1993 and 1994. Go, go, Power Rangers! Thuy is also remembered for playing Kali in The Crow, City of Angels in 1996. Tragically, this would be her final role. On September 3, 2001, she was traveling in a car with some friends along I-5. The car lost control and crashed. Thuy would die from the injuries she sustained. Her funeral was held in Westminster, Orange County, and she was reportedly cremated here at Rose Hills, though there is no marker for her. We're back in Houston, Texas, and another one for you fans of professional wrestling. At Memorial Oaks Cemetery we find the grave of Russ Haas. As a professional wrestler, he's known for teaming up with his brother Charlie as the tag team, the Haas Brothers. They won a number of tag team championships in the 90s, and would sign a development contract with the WWF in 2000. They would go on to win the MCW Southern Tag Team Championship three times during 2001. But before their careers in the WWF could take off, Russ died suddenly in his sleep from heart failure on December 15th, 2001. For our next stop, we voyage to the other side of the globe and team up with fellow YouTuber Master Gala to visit one of the Philippines' biggest stars of the 90s and 2000s, who will remain forever 27. At Manila Memorial Park, we find the magnificent tomb of Rico Yan. He was one of the Philippines' great matinee idols of the era, modeling and acting in television and movies. He's perhaps best known for playing Ricky Salverson on the TV series Gimmick, and Daniel on the soap opera Wherever You Are. And on the big screen he won rave reviews for his performance in 2002's Got to Believe. 
Rico would also tour the country promoting education among Filipino youth, encouraging them to stay in school and value education. But little more than a month after Got to Believe was released, Rico was dead. He had died suddenly of cardiac arrest due to pancreatitis. His funeral was attended by an estimated 10,000 people, one of the largest in Philippine history. There are some members of the 27 Club who were cremated, don't have a grave or specific site to visit, or whose resting place is unknown. Let's take a moment to remember a few of them. Dave Alexander was the original bassist for the influential proto-punk band The Stooges from 1967 to 1970. He not only played bass but wrote many of their songs on the albums The Stooges and Funhouse. He died from pulmonary edema in 1975. Jeremy Ward was a musician best known as a keyboardist and electronic sound manipulator for the band The Mars Volta in the early 2000s. He died from a heroin overdose on May 25, 2003. Jonathan Brandis was a beloved actor in the 90s. You horror fans likely best remember him for his role as young Bill Denbro in the original TV production of It in 1990. He also played Bastion in 1990's The NeverEnding Story 2 and Lucas on Sequest 2032. After a period of career setbacks, Jonathan fell into depression and drinking, and took his own life by hanging in 2003. Others who were unable to visit include K-pop superstar from the band Shiny, Zhang Hyun, who took his own life in 2017 in South Korea. Rapper Fredo Santana, known for tracks like Jealous with Kendrick Lamar, died after suffering a seizure in 2018. And baseball star Tyler Skaggs, who died from asphyxiation after an accidental drug overdose in 2019. Back to the graveyards, we head again to the beautiful English countryside. This is St. Thomas Churchyard, located in the village of Upshur in the Epping Forest area. Here we find a popular British television personality of the early 2000s named Jade Goody. Jade was a reality TV star in the heyday of reality television, rising to prominence when she appeared on Big Brother in 2002. In the years that followed, she'd be a familiar face in reality television, and would release a number of books, as well as products, such as fragrances. In 2008, she was in India filming Big Boss, but just days into the show, Jade received a devastating diagnosis of cervical cancer. She returned to England to start treatment, but by early 2009 it became clear that the disease was terminal. The final months of her life and her battle with cancer were all documented on television. This brought a tremendous awareness of cervical cancer to British audiences, and doctors reported a significant increase in cervical cancer screenings among young women, possibly saving lives. Jade died in her sleep at her home here in Upshur on March 22, 2009. She was buried in her wedding dress having married her partner just one month before she died at the age of 27. Our next stop is Dallas, Texas and Restland Memorial Park. Here lies Justin Mentel. He was an actor best known for playing Garrett Wells in some 16 episodes of Boston Legal in 2005 and 2006. He also played Terrell in the 2009 film G-Force. But on February 1, 2010, Justin was driving near Hollandale, Wisconsin, when his car left the roadway and crashed down an embankment. He died from his injuries. Perhaps the biggest name in music in recent years to join the ranks of the Tragic 27 is Amy Winehouse. The soulful-voiced singer is known as one of the great vocalists of her generation, her style combining elements of jazz, soul, and R&B. She began performing from a young age and burst onto the scene with the success of her 2003 album, Frank. Her song, Stronger Than Me, won her the Ivor Novello Award. Her next album, Back to Black, would be a worldwide critical and commercial success, becoming one of the best-selling albums in UK history. She would win an astounding five Grammys the following year, including Best New Artist, Record of the Year, and Song of the Year for Rehab. The tragic irony of the song for which she is best known is that Amy did struggle much of her life with substance abuse and addiction. A struggle that would ultimately claim her life, passing away from alcohol poisoning on July 23, 2011. She was cremated at Golders Green, her ashes then interred here with her grandmother, at Edgewareberry Cemetery outside of London. 
Our last stop of the day is back home at Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Overlooking the lake is a bronze statue of Anton Yelchin, a magnificent tribute to a young talent gone too soon. Anton was born in the Soviet Union to figure skater parents. They immigrated to the U.S. when Anton was a baby. Young Anton was a born performer and began appearing on television and in movies by the age of 10. He would earn critical praise for his roles in Hearts in Atlantis and Along Came a Spider at just 11 years old. He'd go on to appear in films like Alpha Dog and Terminator Salvation and voice Clumsy Smurf, but is perhaps best remembered today for playing young and plucky Pavel Chekhov in the new Star Trek movies. Russian Wizkid, what's your name, Chanko? Chirpov? Ensign Chekhov, Pavel Andreevich, sir. Fine, Chekhov, Pavel Andreevich. Begin shipwide mission broadcast. Yes, sir, happy to. On June 19th, 2016, Anton failed to show up to rehearsals. Later that night, friends found him pinned between his jeep and the brick pillar of the gate outside his house. He was dead, a victim of what was described as a freak accident, when his car rolled back down the driveway and pinned him against the gate. His cause of death was described as blunt traumatic asphyxia. This statue commemorating Anton was unveiled in October 2017. And in 2019, Anton's parents produced a documentary about the life of their son, titled Love and Tosha. And that concludes our tour of the Forever 27. This is not a comprehensive list of the 27 club's membership. And let us hope, perhaps against hope, that the club's membership ceases to grow entirely. Thanks for watching.